be making bases. What's going on YouTube beat making basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe as well as give me a thumbs up on the video. If you like the content without further ado, let's jump into today's video. What I'm going to be doing is covering how you can fix a system overload message in logic pro 10. All right. So check this out. Um, first I'm gonna go ahead and play around here in the session and then we're going to see this, this message pop up. So I have this uh, melody that I was creating here, basically created a melody, reversed it, um, you know, and it just getting the process of manipulating some things, but I'm noticing that I'm getting a system overload message whenever I try to play more instruments. So let's check it out. There it is. Took a little bit of time, but there's the message. Okay. Now you're going to see this message pop up. It's going to give you a basic um, analysis of what you can do to fix it. But I'm going to go over some other things that you can do as well. So first of all, what's happening is um, basically your PC or your computer is working overly hard to process everything. Okay. And this usually happens when you're working with um, MIDI files. Um, that have a lot of different stuff on it. So like, for instance, I'm going to click off, click off of this real quick and I'm going to show you what I mean here. So we have this right here it has an effect on it. We also pulling up this VST right here on the same channel. Then this channel right here is, is sampled some stuff. This channel sampled some stuff in reverse and stuff. And then also I'm coming over here trying to mess with something else. Now that alone shouldn't be, um, affecting my processing power, but we tie in some other factors like, okay, first of all, I have, um, this recording screen recording software going at the same time. This is Camtasia. This is what I use to record my videos. Um, that's going on at the same time. So that's adding to your processing power. Then I have these other apps and stuff like that and programs open. So Google Chrome, even though it's just online, like a, um, online site, um, that still contributes to it. Splice contributes to it. So different things that you want to do to um, deal with this system overload. First things first is go ahead and shut down all of the programs that's not on here. Uh, that's, that shouldn't be running. So Splice, we're not working on, you know, using any um, melodies or anything like that from Splice. So let's go ahead and quit that. We don't need to be surfing the net while we're making beats. So we just go ahead and click Google, um, quit on Google Chrome. And I would quit Camtasia, but truthfully, since I'm recording, I mean, it doesn't really make too much sense to do that. Obviously you need this cause that's what you're going with right there. Finder even mm, not as, not as a big deal. Um, I can click on this real quick and then, um, yeah, it's really just clicking off of everything here. So it's not really that big of a deal. Now within here, and so within Logic, what you want to do is go over here to the very top left where it says Logic Pro 10. And these are some things we can do to, you know, basically help this process out. Um, preferences and audio. And as they're saying, what you could do is up the buffering size. So usually when it comes to recording, I have it down at 1, 256. What we can do is try it at one, uh, 512. And that should be, you know, pretty good, decent. Um, now, what you could also do here is process buffering range, turn that down some. So instead of it being on large, put that at medium. All right. And then also there's multi-threading. Sometimes if you, you, if you have it selected at playback and live tracks, that can slow things down because it's trying to do a whole lot here. What you do instead is go to playback tracks and then push apply. Okay, so now we have this a higher buffering size which deals with samples. And then we also have this lower uh, process buffering range which is also dealing with samples. 
that should fix it. Now, the only other thing that we could do here, if it's still going on, is go ahead and close out of all of the programs and then re, um, like restart our computer and then come back in and see if that also has something to do with it. Now, another thing that you could do to fix a system overload um, message is after you've restarted your computer, like if that, like everything else didn't help and you restart your computer, I would recommend, now they're gonna tell you like if you search for this, you could basically do something called freezing your tracks. But I think that that's, especially if you're just working with a basic loop right now, I don't think you should freeze the tracks, if you're, especially if you're working with basic loop. Instead, what I recommend doing is it's going over here to the actual tracks that are um, still in like MIDI format and just right clicking them and then doing bounce in place. And what we're gonna be doing by doing that is actually um, turning the MIDI file into an audio file. So we'll say that, there you go, there's one. We'll bounce this other one into place. All right, and then what you could do now is just do another save as, and then maybe say instead of like, so I, I'm making this Drake Melody, so I'll say Drake Melody 2. And so this will be a brand new session, and then what I would do is I would delete all of the MIDI tracks right here that I already used. And now what's going to happen is audio is way easier for um, Logic Pro 10 or your DAW to, to process. So now it just has these two audio files to process, and then I can just continue to go through the process of, um, you know, making more, you know, melodies and different things like that. And then if I start seeing that and um, system overload, I can just bounce these down to audio as well. But I'm gonna play this for a little bit just to show you that the audio, the system, um, system overload message should be gone. So playing through pretty well before in some previous times, like say if I was trying to do that, it would be giving it a hard time, lagging, different things like that. Just to go over it again, like an overview of certain tips and tricks that you could use to um, basically fix a system overload message in Logic Pro 10. First thing I would check here is going to the top uh, left and going to Logic Pro 10, preferences, you're gonna check your audio and make sure that your buffering size is not super low and make sure your process uh, buffer range is not too high. So get it, you know, put it at medium and maybe at 512 on this buffer size. Also make sure this multi-threading is just selected on play tracks, playback tracks. All right. Other things that you could do is make sure that you don't have a whole bunch of other programs running in the background. So you can click off of those. Um, another thing you could do is restarting your computer. So what that's going to do is guarantee that there's going to be no other programs running in the background except for the programs that you want. So like, for instance, Logic Pro 10. And for me, I have a screen capture recording program going on in the background with the, the computer having been reset. Chances are I, had, I don't have anything else that I clicked on on accident that's running in the background or anything that's going to help when it comes to this. And then last but not least, is going ahead and turning your session into audio files, okay? You can do that obviously by clicking on it and right clicking on each um, melody or loop and push bounce in place, it's gonna turn into an audio file. Then what you're gonna do is do a save as and um, do like whatever your song name is, you know, plus you can add a two, three, four, whatever um, session second session it is um, and then go ahead and delete all those other files except for the audio files and then you should be good to go but anyway y'all that's today's video hopefully it helps and I'll see you in the next video peace